If you're the hardest training person at your gym, you are old school. If you hate math, but you can count by 45s, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Hey guys, we're super excited to be here at the LA Fit Expo. It's our third year in a row. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be launching a tasty pastry. It's a low carb Pop Tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs. And we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our IFBB New York Pro runner-up, Justin Rodriguez, who's getting ready for the upcoming Chicago Pro in less than two weeks now. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, working hard here. By the by here, yeah, you know, a lot of people thought that you were the uh, the rightful winner of the New York Pro. They thought that you should have been the guy with his hand raised up in the air. How do you feel about that? Oh, I feel great. Me, uh, and my cousin make a great job. Um, it was a great year, but you know, maybe next time I take that trope. Yeah, how long have you been working with uh, Justin now? Uh, we, my coach, yeah, how long he, he can answer. Two years. Two, oh, two years? How'd you guys meet? Uh, when, when Alexis won 2018 Tampa Pro, I talked to uh, Alexis, I want to work with your coach because it's perfect for the condition. I need to be the condition guy. I right. need to be better in the condition. Yeah. Now, Justin, you're a guy who came out of nowhere. And no one knew where you, I didn't even know where you came from originally. You just popped up and all of a sudden you started you know, placing well at shows, and people are like, Who, who's this guy, you know? Now, you are originally from the Dominican Republic. You pl yeah. you know, we, before the show, I was talking to you. I didn't even know this, but you, you were a, you, you played baseball down there, and you were, you know, played in the semi-professional type of setting. So that, you know, that was where you spent a lot of your early 20s focused on baseball. And that's why no one really, you know, had an understanding of, of how you got into the bodybuilding world. What was it like, you know, playing baseball in the Dominican Republic? I play baseball like uh, all Dominican guys, youngers. Yeah. Yeah, because I um, follow the Sammy Sosa, Pedro Martinez. Of course. But when I come in from USA, I started watching video on YouTube about Jay Calder, Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> I started love about it with them. <laughs> now, when you're playing baseball, okay, and you played second base, which is not an easy, uh, which is not an easy position to play, so you must have been pretty good in the field. Um, when you play baseball and you see guys like Sammy Sosa and all these guys, you know, obviously making multi millions and millions of dollars, I have to imagine that in your mind, that's probably where you saw yourself wanting to go originally, correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. <laughs> now, at what point, I mean, I, I don't know how competitive baseball is. I'm assuming at some point it's hard to jump from semi-pro up until the major leagues, you know, how difficult is that, and how close were you to actually making it as a as a professional? You know, oh, it's very hard in my country because maybe one guy from one million really can get the okay. major league baseball. It's a different sport, different label. You know, right, right. It's very hard. How, what's harder, bench pressing four hundred pounds or hitting a, a ninety mile per hour fastball? It, Hitting a ball a 99.7 mile is very, it's very hard. <laughs> Hi, let me ask you this question. How do you train yourself to do that? Like, I mean, obviously, you don't, when you're starting out as a kid, they're not throwing that fast. But, I mean, how do you transition from that, like, 50, 60 mile per hour fastball to 90 miles per hour? I mean, if you flinch, the ball is by you already. Yeah, yeah. You need to open your eyes and uh, be ready because the ball 90 mile. You never see when it's coming. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a miracle that these guys can hit the ball the way they do. They make it look so easy, too. Yeah, it's more easy to be a pitcher than yeah. a hitter. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. Now, let me ask you this question. Is it harder 
batting in, in baseball or playing the field? Because, I mean, if you're playing second base and someone cracks a, you know, a line drive to you, that thing's going 1,000 miles an hour at you. I mean, you've got to really be able to react pretty quickly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very harder. Is that just something you learn over the years of just doing it from when you are a kid? Yeah, because everybody in Dominican Republic played baseball like a start of three or four years old. Right. I started like five years old. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you, you grew up with baseball. Now, when you watch baseball on TV, do you ever miss it or do you love bodybuilding more? Uh, I don't miss it anymore. No? No. Now, let, let's say I put together an RX muscle baseball team, okay? Or so, and, and I recruited you to play on my team because mm. I want to beat all these, these, these guys around here. You, you, can you still play? You still have good skills? Oh, well, I don't know now with 22 arms, it, maybe it's hard to throw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you probably still are amazing. All right, let's yeah. talk bodybuilding. Uh, New York Pro this year, um, you showed up finally, finally. I've been saying this for the last year or two. I said, if Justin ever shows up in shape, people better watch out because he's going to be super dangerous. Chris Aceto was right there in the, in the stands. He felt you should have won that show. Uh, you know, a lot of people felt you had the best conditioning on stage. This was the best look you had brought to the stage ever. Um, was it satisfying for you to finally show up at your best? Yeah, of course. That was my best. And yeah. this guy hurt me a lot. He, he improved a lot of my condition because every year everybody wants to see Justin in better condition, you yeah. know? What did you do differently with Justin this time around that, that got him in such good shape? Um, well, last year when we did the Indy Pro in 2019, he was the best condition he had been at that point, but he was a little too sucked down, a little too drawn down. He was a little flat on stage. That was our first prep together. So what we did this time, actually, believe it or not, um, we were aiming originally for the Chicago Pro coming up here in a week and a half. Right. And he decided four weeks out from the New York Pro he wanted to do it. So we were uh, very out of shape at that point. But I said, all right, four weeks, we're going to have to suffer big time. He suffered immensely for two weeks at least, uh, you know, 40 grams of carbs, sometimes three sessions of cardio. Wow. And then by, by about eight days out, we were able to kind of rein it in, slow it down, fill him up slowly. It's just, you know, learning his body over time. Sure. I've learned how to feed him. I've learned how to manipulate things with him that his body requires uh, rather than other people. Justin's kind of a, he's a unique body to his response physiologically with sodium and water. Mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of different things with him. We kind of figured it out finally for this show. So I'm excited for this upcoming Chicago Pro because we we've, we've pretty much have the formula down. Well, Justin, a lot of people c uh, compare your physique to Victor Martinez's um, you have a lot of similar poses. You even emulate some of his, his twisting side, you know, his front double bicep pose. Um, is that a physique that you look up to as, as a physique that you'd like to, you know, achieve? Um, no, really, Bo. He's Dominican Dominator, you know? <laughs> but my physique goal is show Roden. Yeah. No, I'm saying you look a lot like Victor on stage. I think a lot of people yeah, notice everyone that. everyone say I look like a Victor. I have that big respect because, you know? Yeah. He's a, a sample for us. Right, right, of course. Now, after that second place finish, obviously, in New York, you know, you're, like your coach said, we're, you're going to head towards Chicago, obviously, looking for that win. We're probably going to see some big names in Chicago of last-minute people trying to qualify for the Olympia. Obviously, going to the Olympia with a big win under your belt would be a tremendous, tremendous, um, uh, I guess, accolade for you and, and good for, you know, you going into the Olympia. Is it hard? You find it hard to continue dieting? Because, I mean, you were so peaked out for New York. Now you've been dieting for a bunch of weeks now after New York. Do you find that you're really starting to, do you feel worn down at all? Uh, it's, the diet is part of this, you know. You're going to suffer, you want to be the number one. And um, when you try to get the Olympia qualification, you need to work hard for, her, mm -hmm. for that. What, I'll ask both of you this question. You both can answer. What's the goal? I'm assuming he's going to be in the Olympia. You know, obviously that I don't think that's a foregone conclusion, pretty much at this point. But 
what's the goal for the Olympia this year? I mean, where would you guys be? Obviously, everyone wants to win, but where would you be happy with him finishing? In, in what group? Top 10, top 5? I and mean, what are you guys you aiming for? This year? Uh, you can ask him. Uh, I think realistically, Justin did the Olympia in 2018. I wasn't working with him at the time, and I think he was in the last call out at that show. It was his first Olympia. Right. So I think realistically, top 10 uh, for, for this year, if you know, we go to the Olympia. And I think in a year or two, top six, I really feel like sure. Justin has that potential to be up in that upper echelon of uh, competitors. I, I agree with you. I think he does. I think he absolutely does. And, you know, it, people don't realize you've only been bodybuilding. You've only been comp competing since 2015. It's, it's less than five years you've been competing. And from what we discussed before the show, you said you, did you, you only started in 2011. Why did you get such a late start into bodybuilding? Was it because you were playing baseball for so long? Oh, uh, yeah, because when the girl, uh, Jessica, she saw my picture on Facebook. She, t she asked me, oh, you want to compete? I said, I don't want to compete. I just <laughs> do the, my workout for fun, the gym yeah. for fun. Oh, you have potential. You have genetic. Let me try. And we prayed for one year for 2015 um, Powerhouse Classic in Connecticut uh, versus Boston Lloyd. Yeah, that's right. He was uh, in that show. You're right. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. I took the my class on the overall. Right. That's when we say, saw you first. Yeah. Yeah, and she said, "You see, you had the potential. Now you need to work harder for, right. for get your car and do the sport." And I like now. Well, you looked amazing at that show in 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 uh, Connecticut. No one knew who you. Were. Everyone's like, "Where did this guy come from?" And the funny thing was, you were just training on your own, right? You didn't really even know what you were doing, essentially. Yeah. I trained by myself this year. Um, only 2007, uh, 207 my way. Uh, that was crazy because my first show, my first competition, I won the overall. I said, oh, my God, I can do the sport. <laughs> How much did you weigh at that show? 207. And what did you weigh in, in New York? Uh, 250. 250. <laughs> so you gained 43 pounds of muscle in like two years. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. And, and you're still growing. Do you feel that you, you – how – well, let me ask you this question. How big do you think your body can get at this point? How much more muscle do you think you guys can put on that frame and still have it be aesthetic, of course? Oh, uh, my goal is never to play the same game. I think uh, 250 on um, good condition is, is the goal for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. I think if you try to get too big, you could ruin the shape of your and the flow of your body. And I think you know a lot of guys that do that and they don't realize that what they're doing. Um, yeah. But where, where do you think I? You know, I I know no one likes to uh, point out their weaknesses, but what do you, what body parts are you still working hard on? I know I know you've brought up a lot of body parts since last year. What what still doesn't make you happy when you look at pictures of yourself? Oh, we're working harder on my legs. Okay. Yeah. Today Why do you was... think? What what's with legs? Why is legs a, a weaker bo a body part for you just by nature, or is it you think you weren't training them correctly for a long time? Because I started training leg heavy. Late on this point, uh, you know? okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, you seem to have all the genetic potential to gain muscle and and and, and to do what you need to do. And uh, yeah. when you um, when you take a step back and you look at the sport as a whole, obviously this is something that you're passionate about. You love the sport. You want to make a living from the sport. Um, what other ventures are you doing? Are you, are you are you coaching people at all? What are you doing to try to like make money in the sport itself, aside from just competing at this point? Um, last year I, I quit my job to start training people in okay. New York. Yeah. So you're you you want to do this full? You're all in now, pretty much. Yeah, I wanna I wanna be a bodybuilding twenty four seven. You know, okay. all right. makes sense to me. Look, you, you really shocked a lot of people. I think a lot of people, you're on a lot of people's radar. You're certainly on the judge's radar now as a guy to look out for as a very dangerous competitor. Going into Chicago, I have to believe you're one of the favorites uh, to win that show. And I want to just wish you the best of luck up there. And uh, I hope you bring home first place. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we're working harder for that. Yeah, no, you, look, you've been busting your butt and... Uh, 
once again, when, when I think about the fact that you've only been really competing for five years, I can't even imagine what you're going to look like five years from now. Because I always tell people it takes 10 years of competing before you really come into your own as a physique. And you haven't even come close to that. You're only at the halfway point. Yeah. So Maybe we, we are planning is two, three years to be top six Mr. Olympia. And I think you, I think you can more. go higher than that. I really do. I think you can. Assuming, you know, everything goes great and uh, no injuries, I think, and knock on wood, I think you're going to go very far. See, I got my Yankee shirt on for you today. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Yankee fan, I'm Yankee fan too. Oh, you are a Yankee fan. All right, good. Yeah. New York. Yeah, I'm still – I'm in Florida now, but I'm still a New York fan, so I got to tell you that. <laughs> All right, guys. Good luck in Chicago, and uh, hopefully we'll be getting you back here after your big win. All right. Thank you, David, for the opportunity. Um, you want to thank anyone? Yeah, appreciate it, brother. You guys want to thank anyone or put, plug anything or – Huh? You want yeah, to thank anyone. anyone out there or plug anything that you're selling or anything like that? Oh, no. Just thank for the people from New York for the support. Thank to my coach, AJ, uh, Seven Factory family, um, his wife, Nikki, and my wife, Claudia. Yeah. That's my support. All right. And thank if you, if you want, obviously, if, if you haven't subscribed to Justin's Instagram, his Instagram is Justin D I F E V, right? I F E V? And uh, yeah. yeah, we just had it up here. I told him he's gonna put his. You got to put his name under this so people know who it is. Yeah, I put the name. I put the name already. All right, Justin good. Rodriguez. Guys, subscribe to his channel. Show him some love. Show him some support. And best of luck, guys. Uh, you guys are doing a great job. Keep up the great work. For now, though, we are at the end of another episode of Live with. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.